Yes, so we'll be doing lots of rotations. And the theme is the idea, maybe an overused concept of letting go. So let's come to our mats and lie down in a semi-supine position. If you've got your blanket, you can always bring that behind the head if you like. There we go. Lucy's entered the waiting room. And just begin to arrive on your mat, bringing your energy in towards your body, sinking the mind down into the torso. They're so beginning to arrive on the mat and compiling a weather report on how you feel. So what's going on for you today? What can you put aside for a moment for your practice? You can pick up anything else that you need at the end of the practice. Noticing how you feel, how's your breath? And I invite you straight away to bring your hands, your heart space and your belly region. Beginning to cultivate that nasal breathing that's so key to our practice. And perhaps you can feel some movement in the front of the chest, perhaps not, just notice that. And as you begin to breathe through the nostrils tonight, just notice if there's movement in the upper hand or the lower hand or indeed both hands together. And we're going to cultivate that sense of diaphragmatic breath, abdominal breathing, as we move down into soft bellies. No need to hold onto anything around this region. Feel like you can open and expand around the belly region. That's really quite revolutionary for many of us to feel like we can let go around this region of the body. When we hold tightly, especially around the waist, we're actually preventing the diaphragm from moving efficiently. We're preventing ourselves from breathing and we're preventing the diaphragm from massaging the heart that's situated just above the diaphragm and the liver just below. So there is a really important function to this movement of the diaphragm. We allow for the rib case, rib cage, to expand and open on the inhalation. And the sense of drawing inwards on the exhalation, allowing for the on the hands to almost move apart on the breath. And the sense of moving back together again on the exhalation. And if you like, we can bring the hands down to the hip point so you can keep the hands on the torso. We're gonna to begin to move the pelvis with this action. So with the exhalation, the diaphragm draws up, the pelvis rolls, and we flatten around the lumbar. On an inhalation, the pelvis rolls towards the feet, small lumbar arch comes in, relaxation of the pelvic diaphragm. So we've got the diaphragm, respiratory diaphragm and the pelvic diaphragm that we can utilize to work together. So if, it's hel if it helps to touch into this space with the hands on the hip point, feel free to do so. If we're gonna work th with this pressurized system, I recommend as you flatten the lumbar and tilt the pelvis, to exhale and feel that drawing up of the pelvic diaphragm. As you inhale, you have a sense of the pelvic diaphragm drawing down towards the feet and the lumbar arch coming in. Now, if it's too complicated to think about two diaphragms and a movement at the same time, drop the pelvic diaphragm aspect, unless you really like that aspect, drop one of the aspects to come back to another time rocking and rolling and if you want to use a visualization think of that pelvis that architectural joint that is the pelvis as a bowl of water solushing that water up towards the face and then solushing the water down towards the feet now as we cultivate this rock and roll and it's very difficult to see this through the zoom it's a subtle movement i want you to feel into whether your head is nodding is this movement being received all the way up the spine? As you create that lumbar arch, does the chin move in towards the breastbone? As you roll and flatten the lumbar, does the chin move up towards the ceiling? Just notice that and cultivate this movement within. 
Now, option to bring yourself into Dweepada Pitham with the hands alongside the body. This time, the knees move away from the pelvis as we roll all the way through the spine. We have that lumbar region, we have the thoracic, and we have the clavicular spine, which is very much in between the shoulder blades. Maybe you want to roll up into that region, maybe you want to create small, a smaller rolling action that's more constricted. It's up to you. So how we start this today, tonight. If you like, we can inhale or indeed exhale the arms overhead at the same time as we roll up through all of those vertebrae and then breathing the arms back down, elongating that inhalation, that exhalation, noticing the effects that that has on the nervous system. How do you feel now in comparison? to right at the beginning of the practice. Nice and smooth, moving yourself through this action. And if you want to bring this pelvic diaphragm into play, feel free to do so. Now, rather than forcing a specific breathing pattern upon you, just notice how you are breathing as you bring the pelvis down. Perhaps it's on an exhalation, perhaps it's on an inhalation. And this time, whatever the breath is doing, we can lift up through the pelvic diaphragm as we draw the pelvis off the floor and release and relax the pelvic diaphragm or pelvic floor or muller band as you roll the pelvic area down to the mat. So we're drawing up through the pelvic diaphragm as we lift the arms up overhead. The arms do not have to come all the way overhead. Just bring them to wherever it feels comfortable to do so. And then roll everything back down, feeling into the vertebra here. Lovely, one more. Inhaling or indeed exhaling, depending on where you're at with your breath. Lift it up through the pelvic diaphragm. Really draw the pelvic diaphragm up as you hold this and then draw everything back down. So while we're in our supine position, we're gonna come into our Garandasana Eagle Pose, bringing the arms down by the side of the body in a T-shape. We're going to cross the legs over one another. So lift the shins off the ground so they're about parallel off the floor. Contain the lumbar by drawing yourself inwards. Now, if there's any pulling on the lumbar, it's very much to do with where the pelvis is situated. So if you try and flatten the lumbar, that will change things, okay? So we're gonna cross the right leg over the left leg firstly. We've got this first crossing action, then double cross. You may be able to bring the foot behind the shin. Now that may be available to you on your back. We're gonna come into this in a standing pose. So explore how that is today. Now we're gonna cross the legs over to the side of the body to come into Jatara Paravriti, supine rotation. Keep the shoulder blade grounded as you allow for the knees to collapse over to the side and then gaze over to the right hand if that's available within your neck. If the neck feels tight, just bring the gaze up towards the center, up to the ceiling. Inhaling into the rib cage, exhaling to settle down towards the ground. Inhale, bring the gaze back through center, roll the knees up towards the middle. We're gonna bring the arms into play now. So crossing the arms over through the midline, the right arm's gonna come over to the left. You go beyond the elbow, see if that's available to you and bring the back of the hands together, okay? Be mindful of what's taking place around the abdominal region. If you've got any herniation or any um, strain around here, again, draw the knees in slightly more so it's not pulling. So we can either bring the back of the hands together or the front of the hands and lift up through the elbows. Option here to come into a crunch-like action on the exhalation, drawing the knees and elbows together. Exhaling, inhaling, draw the elbows and knees away from one another. Exhaling, you can bring the gaze up off the ground and look at the knees if that's preferable. Exhaling, hold that action so you feel strong and then release yourself out of that space. Bring the shins back so they're parallel to the ground here and we're going to cross the left leg over the right leg now. You may have a single cross or a double cross wherever your legs are for you tonight. 
And then we're going to drop the legs over to the right side to come into rotation, keeping the shoulder blades down, grounded into the mat. Gazing over to the left side, opening up the fingers towards the ceiling, keeping the shoulder blade grounded. Breathing, inhaling into the side ribs, exhaling to draw a little deeper into the rotation. Inhale, bring the gaze up through centre, draw the knees up and we're going to bring the arms into your Garandasana. So the left arm is drifting over the right. We go beyond the elbows, bending the elbows, bring the back of the hands together and double wrap if it's available to you. Now, if you're busty, it may be tricky to bring the arms into this space. Lifting up through the elbows towards the chin, feeling into the back of the shoulder blades. On the exhalation, you can draw the elbow and knees together, flattening lumbar against the floor. Inhale, moving the limbs apart. Exhale, drawing limbs together. Inhale, moving the limbs apart. Exhale, drawing the limbs together. Inhale, option next time to hold this action. Flattening the lumbar against the floor, lifting up through the elbows and release the arms out to the side and the legs. Lovely. We're going to open the knees wide and the arms as though you're holding a massive Pilates ball, one of those pregnancy balls. And we're going to insect roll from side to side, massaging along the spine. Now, to a certain extent, we can't overthink this action. It's a somatic movement. How wide do we need to bring the limbs in order to roll? So this is extremely fun, in my opinion. You can bring the knees away from the abdominal region to make this more challenging. And then draw the knees in towards centre, Apanasana here, coming into a tiny ball. And we're going to rock and roll three times to come into a seated Ardha Matsyandrasana, half Lord of the Fishes. So rotation. So as we roll ourselves up, rather than coming into all fours, we come onto our sitting bones and come into a position where the right leg comes over the left. Now, if you've got hold of a block, that can be useful to ensure that the foot is fully grounded. So I've got these really sliver-like blocks that can be really helpful to adjust. Now, the aim of the game is to have all four corners of the foot implanted here with stable sitting bones. You can bring the foot in front of the hip point if that's necessary. Rounding down through the sitting bones, lifting up through the spine. We're gonna spiral from the thoracic around the rib cage here into your closed twist. Either bring the hand to wrap or you can pivot the elbow into the outside of the knee. Inhaling, spiraling action up through the spine. Exhaling, relax the shoulders, waving to the side of you here. The gaze follows around the back of the shoulder here. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhale, come into an open twist, spiraling again through that midsection of the spine, maybe pivoting the elbow to the inside of the knee or wrapping, whatever feels more comfortable. Inhaling, exhaling, spiral and rotate. Inhale into soft bellies, exhale. Inhaling, coming through centre. We're going to transition now, so you may like to come onto your, your sitting bones, swap the legs over, if that's available. Otherwise, just unentangle yourselves, whatever works. Remembering that you have a position with the foot in front of the hip point, if it's not possible to ground the four points of the foot down here, grounding down through sitting bones, lifting up through the spine, rotating into your closed twist, wrapping the hand around the knee and the left hand comes behind the spine or indeed you have that feedback action as you rotate. So it depends how deep you want to take this. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling into soft bellies, exhaling, to rotate the drishti just follows. Inhale through the center, exhale, coming into an open twist. Elbow pivots inside the knee or wraps. Inhale, grounding down through the sitting bones. Exhale to rotate the gaze, the drishti just follows. Inhale, 
Exhale, rotate. Inhale, through the center. And we're gonna bring the legs to one side and swap. Now this action with the hips, you can do with the arms in parallel, exploring the rotation within the hips. This is really lovely, juicy action to do. You can bring the hands down if that's preferable. And we're gonna spiral from this action into your all fours. So bringing the hands down, removing your props, coming into your all fours position. Now in your all fours, if you want some padding under the knees, you can use a blanket. We're going to spread through the fingers nice and wide. We're actually going to open the arms out to the side here and come straight into some circles from the hips. Letting go around the hip space, letting go around the front of the hip flexor, the iliopsoas, coming into circles. <sighs> Taking the breath into Ujjayi quite naturally where we tighten around that glottis muscle of the throat and you can hear audibly the sound of the breath. Now come back in the opposite direction, feeling into these circles. And you may want to take these into a figure of eight action where you cross the hips over through that midline to create that infinity sign. Mapping this movement in the body and without even considering it, you may be releasing around the hips and coming into extension from a flexion in your child. Coming back through in the opposite direction. Before you explore coming into child's pose, Balasana, with the arms out in front of you, we're gonna creep the right hand over to the left side and open up the side seam of the body. Inhaling along the side seam of the torso, exhaling. I'm going to inhale the arms through neutral, through center. Bring the left hand over the right, inhaling along that side seam of the body. Exhaling. Creep the hands now in front of you, and we're going to transition, spreading the fingers wide forwards. Now we're not going to come into the full expression of upward facing dog. We're just going to allow for the hips to sink and settle, maybe creating some more space in between the hands. But we've got the hands directly under the shoulders as we come through. Be mindful to allow this action to come about more around the thoracic and the shoulder girdle than the lumbar. If you have a busy lumbar, it's more likely to move into that area, that vulnerable area of the spine, because it's a secondary curve. We're born in flexion and the extension pattern comes and is developed through movement as we learn to crawl and to stand. Coming into your upward facing dog, allow for the iliopsoas at the front of the hips to lengthen and draw yourselves back into your down, your um, balasana. Now from this action, we're gonna come in to thread the needle. So lifting the pelvis off the ground and the shins, we're gonna bring the left hand in front of the face, inhale the arm up and overhead and follow through with the gaze, threading your needle. Bring the shoulder or thereabouts down onto the mat. Inhaling, flowing between this movement, rotating and coming into the shoulder girdle, maybe the side of the face settles down and you can hold that for a moment. Option to stretch the left arm out to feel into the shoulder girdle. Breathing here. And bringing the hand back to the side of the face, we're gonna unravel that, bringing the right hand in front of the face here now, and then inhale to thread your needle. Exhale, rotating here. Inhale, exhale. And if you don't want to hold it and you want to carry on flowing, that's fine as well. Feeling into this space, stretching out through the right arm now, feeling into the shoulder girdle, breathing into this space before bringing the hand back and coming back and through into your all fours position. We're now gonna find ourselves in plank. So extending through the right leg, you can bring the right leg in, 
and come to the other side without that movement within the pelvis coming through and without any changes at all we just come into plank as though nothing is taking place spreading through the fingers supporting the wrists keeping the shoulder blades zip together imagining there's a zip there and we're going to transition into crocodile in prone so we can chaturanga down or we can knees chest chin as we scoop ourselves forwards into a crocodile with the hands in front of the face allowing for the cheek to settle on one side and then turning the head on the other shaking the hips out to remind ourselves to release and let go before we come into cobra so we're going to take the hands down underneath the shoulders gazing down at the mat pinning the front of the pelvis down into the ground as well as the tops of the feet and we're going to inhale and lift, gazing forwards onto the mat here. Now you can bring your hands into a little teepee shape. Or if you want to go for something more strengthening in the back body, more subtle in terms of a shape, lift the hands off the ground, gazing down at the mat, breathing here, keeping the scapula together, drawing the shoulder blades together, breathing and release shake the hips out option to do that again this time we can use the arms if you're hovering or you can carry on hovering the hands breathing into this space keep those shoulders down away from the ears gazing down at the mats the neck is nice and long breathing here and floating back down and through excellent now we're going to transition into our downward dog option to knees chest chin hips back and then draw the pelvis up towards the ceiling spreading the toes nice and wide spreading through the fingers keeping the scapula together dropping the head so the crown of the head is free and you should feel like you can shake the head out it's completely loose nothing to hold on to here spreading through the, the pinky finger and the thumb to support yourself lovely breathing here now if you need to bring the feet in closer you can we're going to lift up through the right leg into three-legged dog with the pelvis in a stable position you have your three-legged dog to bend the knee and open up through the hips this is a scorpion and we're going to gaze underneath the armpit see if this is available to you there may be some dumping of weight moving into one hand make adjustments as necessary to spread through into your scorpion i'm going to draw that knee in between the frame of the hands to come to the front of the mat now with our low lunge we can wrap the mat double the mat over to protect the knee ensure that the space between the heel and the knee is wide so you can come into a space like this but there's no lengthening taking place with the knee SOS. for some of us if we're very tight here it may be a shorter stance coming into a low lunge that works for you and we're going to get hold of our bricks so i'd like you to bring that brick to the inside seam of the foot firstly we're going to come into our low lunge and explore that energy rooting down apana adana lifting up through the upper body now if your lumbar is busy here draw the tailbone down towards the mat relax the shoulders relaxing around the jaw relaxing around the facial features lovely excellent and then folding yourself forwards we're coming into our pars vakonasana we can do that with the knee down firstly i'm going to lift up into a closed twist apologies i won't be looking at you following with the gaze coming into rotation and we're going to windmill the arm following with the drishti fixing the gaze on the fingers here three times rotating through the shoulder girdle and dropping the hand on the back of the pelvis to look behind you here how does that feel option now in this position to tuck the toes under and come into your high lunge in the same position we're going to windmill the arm in the opposite direction now following with the gaze make sure the knee is bent so it's over the ankle at the front of the mat and breathe 
bring the hands to frame at the front of the mat here. Now, if you need to adjust the foot, feel free to do so. We're going to come into a slightly different Utita Pars Vokanasana. So the, the back leg here comes into an angle where the heel comes down. Now, it doesn't have to come down in this way. You can keep the heel off the ground if that's preferable for your body today. If you can get the heel down, get that angle so the middle of the foot at the back is in direct line with the heel. We're going to bring the right hand to the inside seam of the foot here and open up towards the ceiling. Utita Pars Vatanasana. And again, windmilling with the arm, following with the gaze of the drishti, coming into this shoulder girdle action. So in this position, it feels very different in the hips. You may be feeling that. Breathing and drawing that hand to the back of the pelvis, looking up towards the ceiling if the neck will allow it. How does that feel? Before bringing that arm back in the opposite direction. Opening up round the shoulder here. Are there any adjustments that you need to make? Really strong on that front leg. And then bringing the hand back down and through. We're going to explore moving that brick aside and scooping the foot back into downward dog. Option, of course, to come into Balasana. Make any adjustments that you need to to feel like you're symmetrical. Coming into that downward dog, we're going to scoop up through the three legged dog option on the left side. Bending the knee, spiraling the foot over to the other side of the body. We gaze under the armpit, opening up the hip space. And then exhaling, scooping the knee in between the frame at the front of the mat, in between the hands. Dropping that back knee, flattening the foot. The brick comes to the inside of the foot here. As we spiral, windmilling up through this action, closing into the upper leg. Notice if the knee wings out to the side like this and draw it into the inner seam. Winds milling through the arms here, finding space. The drishti follows the action. No need to rush. Find some smooth movements here as you drop the hand onto the back of the pelvis. Keep that knee in, gazing behind. Tuck the toe under if you want to explore this and lift the knee off the ground. Gazing behind you, breathing into soft bellies and windmill the arm up and through. One, gaze follows. Two, and three. Now this time, we're gonna bring that left hand to meet the brick and scoop the foot in slightly. So you either bring the heel onto the ground or you keep the heel lifted. Whatever works within your body and your hip space today. Okay, so you can bring the foot in and we're going to windmill up and through onto the open side. So we're on our Utita Pars or Kanasana, windmilling through the hand three times. Dropping the hand to the back body, bring the gaze. And then follow through in the opposing direction. Noticing how the hip feels, try not to cling too tightly into the hips. So maybe a clenching sensation. See if you can observe that without further encouraging it. And then bring the hands, that frame, move the brick to the front of the mat. I'm gonna scoop that foot forwards to come into Uttanasana forward fold. Allow for the head to hang heavy, bend the knees. How much do you need to bend the knees to fully release the head down to the ground? Rocking into the front of the feet and the back of the feet. Now we're gonna transition through ragdoll, bringing the hands to the elbows. Release and let go. Shake out the head. Bending the knees, grounding down through the feet. We're gonna lift and roll up through each vertebra to release the gaze. Lastly, as we come up, and the last thing to come up, of course, is going to be the crown of the head, finding our way into Tadasana. When you're in your Tadasana, find that space of neutrality and equanimity. Okay, so you feel like you're grounded through 
the four corners of the feet. I'm going to ask you to bring your feet together in Samastiti. Now notice if you're clenching around the knees, relax the knees. Bring yourself into a pelvic roll as you come into your Tadasana, rolling the pelvis forward in anterior tilt and backwards a posterior tilt. Then find that neutral space in between. So you're neither here nor here, flattening somewhere in between. Lovely. We're going to come into our Ukatasana chair pose, lifting up through the arms, but the hands are nice and wide. So we're holding on to a massive Pilates ball, squeezing the legs together. Now, if you're very flexible within the pelvis, I would recommend getting hold of the brick and bring the brick in between the legs to fix that area. And it helps strengthen this area that can become really quite loose, especially through childbirth. Coming into Utkatasana, sinking down nice and deep. The shoulders become clenched, bring them into Anjali Mudra, open up around the jaw. Sinking and breathing. And we're gonna lift up through Dropping the brick, coming up onto tippy toes, excuse me while I become headless, lifting up through the arms. Now this time as you come down, make sure the feet are tucked together. Sinking down through Ukatasana with the hands in Anjali Mudra. Now from this position, you want to ensure the pelvis is in neutral because we're going to spiral and rotate to the side. Can you bring the elbow? to the outside of the knee, somewhere in that region, gazing up towards the ceiling, breathing here. Breathing. And then coming through the midline, adjust the pelvis to come to the other side. Excuse me while I don't look at you. Looking to the other side of the mat. Brilliant. Breathing deeply here and drawing yourself in through the midline. Scooping up into your pencil Tadasana, tippy toes, drishti fixed, and bring the hands down through the midline. Lovely. We're going to step the legs out now into a wide leg position. So Prasarita Padottanasana. Make sure those legs are as wide as they need to be. So you have a good chance of hinging forwards. Now, if you have a brick, make use of it. If you've got many bricks, you can create a little tower for yourself. Bring that brick in front of you. So when you hinge forwards, it's underneath your gaze. Bringing the hands to hip points, we're gonna hinge forwards. So the torso is about parallel, gazing down at your brick, if you have one. And then lifting up. It gives you an opportunity to adjust your brick if necessary. This time as we come forwards, we're gonna see if we can get hold of our brick. With both hands on either side, you can have it lengthwise or widthwise. And see if you can extend through the crown of the head to the tailbone and create as much space as possible. Now it's going to feel very different to be able to open up that region of the spine. With the drishti at the brick, we're going to bring the left hand to meet the brick and inhale, and rotate, fixing the pelvis, rotating through the heart space, lifting up through the side body following with the gaze, breathing, dropping the hand perhaps onto the back of the pelvis, find your sacrum, give it a little bit of feedback, a bit of a massage, gazing here before releasing the hand up and over, bring the right hand to centre, inhale, rotate to the side, feeling into that movement, before dropping the hand around the back of the pelvis, the back of the sacrum. Notice if the pelvis is moving, see if you can fix the pelvis so it's squared. And then bring that hand back over and through. This time you can come to the same two sides with the hands at the brick 
or you can see if the left hand will come to the shin or the ankle as you spiral the hand up towards the ceiling. Coming into stronger rotation and bringing the right hand through over to the left ankle or shin spiraling through onto this side. Breathing here and then bringing the hands back down and through. Move that grip and you can bring the hands towards the floor. Can you find the floor? Leaning forward, tilting forwards into the toes. What would it take to bring the top of the head down? Just to play with that concept of bringing the head down. There's no need to actually find yourself there. If you can get the crown of the head down, you can get a little bit of feedback from that position. And if I was in the space with you, perhaps if you could get the top of the head down, we could explore tripod from that position, maybe bring some weight into that region of the body, lifting up through the heels. Bring the hands back to the hips and hinge, bending the knees up and out, allowing for you to adjust as you come into an upright position. We're gonna spiral the heels in towards the center now to come into horse pose otherwise known as goddess. Make sure the knees are tracking with the toes. Now this is gonna be dependent on the external rotation of the hips. Some of us may want to have the feet closer in to protect the knees. So when you're bending the knees, there's no twisting, no pressure taking place. Alignment's really key here. Coming into horse, we're gonna inhale the arms up overhead, straightening the knees <laughs> and sink down. Can you feel what takes place within the pelvic diaphragm? Lifting, inhaling, maybe bring the gaze up towards the center, exhale. Make any adjustments you need to with the alignment here. Inhale, lifting up the gaze through the midline, exhale, inhale straightening those knees. Now this time on the exhalation, we're gonna bring the hands through cactus, keeping the tailbone grounded, lifting up through the pelvic diaphragm. The hands come to the front of the mat with the face. Okay, opportunity here to come into Samasana, lion's breath. And I'll do one for demonstration. Inhaling. <laughs> Sticking the tongue out, rolling the eyes back and up into the eye socket. Inhaling. <coughs> and you release that tongue out as much as possible, relaxing the facial muscles. One more time. Inhaling. <coughs> and straightening the knees, bringing the hands down to the thighs. We're gonna bring the hands up into cactus again and lift the heels off the ground one by one. So one side firstly, exploring the footprint and then coming to the other side. Pretty strong, keep the scapula drawing together behind the back body. Lovely. Feeling that pelvic diaphragm lifting and straighten the legs. We're going to transition down to the ground now into a supine position. We can bring the feet in towards the center, lifting up onto the toes, bending the knees, and come down, watching the clicking of the knees. So we need our straps. So as you come down onto your sitting bones, get hold of your strap, and we're going to create a loop. Now, for those of you who have longer limbs than myself, you want that loop to be as long as possible. And you can get double length straps. I do actually have some upstairs. They're about two meters long, but a standard strap really only creates a loop about this size. So what we're aiming for is a loop that is long enough to come around the back of the head and the base of the foot. But we're going to be doing that from our Supta Padangustasana position. So bringing the back down onto the mat. Firstly, bring it around the foot. Make sure the buckle is in the middle so it doesn't come around the back of the head. And we're going to bring the strap to the back of the scalp, the back of the skull. 
So position wise, it's about just above the occipital ridge, the heel of the skull. Now you may want to adjust as is necessary. Now the trick here is that you want to feel like you can release and let go. But there is only one position that will allow for that. So if you bring the hands behind the head, it will help position and find the position that you need. And the foot is pressing up towards the ceiling. Now, once you find the sweet spot, you can explore pressing through the leg and seeing how it changes things. So you'll notice I've got my hands clasped behind my head. And that's just because that feeling of almost slippage around the neck and the head, it's a bit like whiplash, it's something you really want to avoid. It's a very sensitive area. You can explore bending the knee as much as you like, straightening the leg as much as you like, and really releasing around the back of the neck and head. Finding a position that works for you. Feeling like you can release the shoulders, releasing the jaw, the TMJ, releasing the mouth. Allow for the mouth to go slack. Maybe it feels like the jaw can open and fully release. Allowing for the gaze to come in wherever it needs to. And if you want to, you can close your eyes, breathing into this space and releasing here. How does this feel? Can you release even further? Whilst you cling on to, maybe you can release even more. And if like me, you just want to stay here forever. <laughs> Great, remember this position. All you need is a strap. Release the head first. And then bring the foot out. And hopefully there's a palpable sense of a change before we come over to the other side, bringing that strap around the back, the base of the foot rather. And then the strap comes around to the back of the head. Finding that position, it may be easier the second time. Releasing around the shoulders. Changing the position of the strap if necessary. Finding that occipital ridge. Exploring, straightening the leg. Sinking the heavy weight of the head down and away. Relaxing the shoulders. Relaxing around the jaw. And if you can release the hands away from the back of the strap, maybe you can rest them down on the side of the torso. Releasing and letting go. Letting go of any constriction here. Releasing any impingement the cranial nerves around the back of the skull into that occipital ridge area. The area where there are so many lymph nodes. Where the vagus nerve connects. The brain stem is. Breathing and releasing here, essentially feeling like you could stay here forever. And I invite you to bring the hands to the back of the skull, releasing the head and releasing the foot. Now you may want to play with bringing both feet into the strap, just to explore having the head down on the floor. Feeling into the front of the forehead. And maybe with the strap, if you bring the buckle closer to you, you can open the legs out and explore how it feels to have the strap support the feet. You won't come into a very wide leg position, but just explore how that feels. There's a lot you can do with a strap. And if you're happy rolling, we're gonna come into an inversion. Now, I'm gonna play with having the strap here. In terms of our contraindications for our inversion, I'm going to recommend coming into a plow. If you want to adjust yourself and bring this blanket underneath the shoulders to create more space for the neck, please feel free to do so. For plow, the contraindications are migraines, 
glaucoma, any eye issues, high blood pressure, low blood pressure. Okay. If any of those are affecting you, maybe stay with this position, the kind of legs up the wall with a strap. Otherwise, we can explore rolling over into plow, bringing the hands to the back of the pelvis, gazing up between the legs. Now, if you want to use a prop, I recommend a bolster underneath the feet. If you put the bolster underneath the feet, then you'll be able to bring the toes down a lot easier. Now, plow is harder to access than shoulder stand. And the reason for that is the amount of shoulder mobility required to come into this position. So it may be the case that you want to come into a shoulder stand. And that takes the strain off the front of the chest or indeed Fipariti Carini. So if you've come into a plow shape, just feel into that space. And I'm coming down into a Vipariti Karini legs up the wall. And you can explore these variations of inversions. They're all inversions. It all involves the hips above the heart, the heart above the head. Allows for those benefits, circulation, lymphatic drainage, venal return, giving the heart a break. This is good for varicose veins. Giving yourself the opportunity to flip your perspective upside down. Like a sand timer, allowing for energy to percolate in the opposite direction to the usual. And if you're coming out of your plow, think about that exit. Think about the rolling as you calm down through each vertebra. And if you're coming down in that way, lift the gaze up, remove the strap if you need to, bring the knees in towards the chest. We're gonna come into fish. If, you're in, if you came into plow, you can come into fish. Now the trick with fish is that you do not put the weight into the head. Straightening the legs, Bring the hands clasped underneath the buttocks, lift up through the elbows, but don't put any weight in the top of the head here as you lift up and through, drawing the chin in to release out and down. So exiting is the hardest bit, I'd say, with fish, to exit by moving the chin in. We're going to drop the knees from left to right, easing out in rotation before coming into Shavasana. Our final relaxation. Now we have many props in our evening sessions if we've got the props at home. If you want to get hold of your bolster, maybe that would be a nice thing to have under the knees. If you want to get hold of a flat block or some padding with a blanket, bring that behind the head. Particularly useful to adjust any kyphosis, drawing the chin in towards the chest and make the adjustment necessary to open up around the back of the neck. And we can do this by drawing the hands down along and up to tuck the chin in, make that adjustment. If you want to adjust your shoulders and your heart space region, draw down through the elbows, lifting up. Similar action to fish as we just did in that counter pose to release the shoulders, the scapula draw together, opening up that region of the body ensure that your pelvis and lumbar are comfortable. Your body temperature will decrease, so use a blanket and bring that over you. Now, while you're in your bolster restorative position, you can bring the feet together in Vadakanasana, if that's comfortable to do so. I had my ankles crossed here, that's also lovely to come into. Or you can widen the stance, so you're in a starfish-like shape. Now I'm going to come and sit up to talk you through your relaxation. Feel free to make any adjustments that you need. Coming into a comfortable space where you can release and if there's any residue anxiety after the practice, just know that you can make any adjustments you need to to feel more comfortable, whether it's to bring the hands to the heart space and the belly, which is a reassuring 
sense of touch. Or you come into a, um, a space with the palms facing up towards the ceiling, which is a more receptive pose, or if you need grounding, bring the palms down to the floor. There are all these very subtle tweaks that we can make. And the more we practice yoga, the more these subtleties come into play, the more that we notice. And feel free to allow for your awareness to wander. I'm going to read some quotes from John Kabat-Zinn, who brought mindfulness to the West. And these are about letting go. So it's an overused term, this concept of letting go. It's a bit new age, a bit of a cliche. So it's overused, but it's an important one. Letting go means just what it says. It's an invitation to cease clinging to anything, whether it be an idea, a thing, an event, a particular time, or view, or desire. It is a conscious decision to release with full acceptance into the stream of present moments as they are unfolding. To let go means to give up coercing, resisting, or struggling in exchange for something more powerful and wholesome which comes out of allowing things to be as they are without getting caught up in your attention, attraction to or rejection of them. In the intrinsic stickiness of wanting, of liking and disliking. It's akin to letting your palm open to unhand something you have been holding on to. The sign your hand is clenched when you release simply by opening that hand out. But it's not only the stickiness of our desires concerning outer events which catches us, nor is it only the holding on with our hands. We hold on with our minds. We catch ourselves, get stuck ourselves by holding, often desperately to narrow views, to self-serving hopes and wishes. Letting go really refers to choosing to become transparent, the strong pull of our own likes and dislikes and of the unawareness that draws us to cling to them. To be transparent requires that we allow fears and insecurities to play themselves out in the field of full awareness. Letting go is only possible if we can bring awareness and acceptance to the nitty gritty of just how stuck we can get. If we allow ourselves to recognise the lenses we slip so unconsciously between observer and observed, that then filter and colour, bend and shape our view. We can open in those sticky moments, especially if we are able to capture them in awareness and recognise it when we are caught up in either pursuing and clinging or condemning and rejecting, rejecting in seeking our own gain. Stillness, insight and wisdom arise only when we can settle into being complete in this moment without having to seek or hold on to or reject anything. This is a testable proposition. Try it out just for fun. See for yourself whether letting go, when a part of you really wants to hold on, doesn't bring a deeper satisfaction than clinging. So it's an inter interesting proposition to consider this physical, mental letting go. And just to simply notice what we hold so desperately onto, what do we cling to? And that clinging exists within the pelvis. It exists within the constriction of the breath. 
within a rigidity around the thoracic. It can exist around the tightness that we hold in our shoulder region, and the tightness within our necks, and the clenching of the jaw. I'm going to allow for you a few moments peace for you to release into your shavasana uninterrupted. Just noticing your awareness move from space, 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 as it so naturally will do so. Noticing the sounds around you. And maybe you can hear the hum of the nervous system, the blood rushing around the body. And then begin to notice in the inhalation. And maybe if your awareness has drifted outside of the body into the space around the body or even beyond the space around the body, outside. Bring that awareness into the extremities, the fingers and the toes. And begin to move the extremity. And in your own time, I invite you to roll over onto your side, either side, in a fetal position. Taking your time. marinating in this space. And then at the end of the following sound, I invite you to come into an easy cross-legged position with the eyes closed if it feels comfortable, or indeed just gently gaze down in front of you. Allowing for yourself to adjust to this upright position. And then if you're wearing glasses, maybe set those aside somewhere safe. 
to close the practice. We're going to bring the hands together to rub, create some friction, some heat, some tapas, otherwise known as tapas in Sanskrit. And then we're going to bring the hands to cup around the eye socket, noticing any patches of light and darkness within the eyelids. And then bring the hands down through the midline, bowing in acknowledgement of one another and the space in between. Namaste. Namaste.